That's right. It's game time. Once again, with the HBCU Stroll, I'm Johnny Cole here to bring you another special guest that I will eventually get through. Great weekend of college football, especially on the HBCU road. Uh, we had Deion Sanders on, on 60 Minutes uh, shining the light on our conference as well as uh, uh, his athletic director and the commissioner. So there's a lot of good things that's happening in HBCU sports. I just want to be a part of it. That's why I started my show, to make sure that we tell America and let America know that there's some great, great coaches uh, in black college football. Next, I want to bring on a guy that I had the opportunity to coach what, as he was a player. And uh, he's one of the few players that can say that he beat the cold boys. Not one time, not twice, I think three times in a row. Uh, he played at Tuskegee, uh, Tuskegee University. Of course, everybody know about Tuskegee, great university. Uh, this guy is a great guy. I've been following his career. Now he's the office coordinator at Tuskegee University, his alma mater. I want to bring on Aaron James. Coach hey, James. Doing, Coach? How you doing? Man, I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. Man, I tell you, I've got a big week of football. Uh, as I was saying when we were talking, that um, it's the semifinals for the west side of the SIAC. You got you guys versus Lane, Tuskegee versus Lane and Kentucky State versus Miles. But the only three people to count right now is is you who took control your own destiny. Yes. And then you got Lane sitting three and one. I know Coach Vernon Brown biting at the bits. Mm -hmm. And you got Kentucky State uh sitting at three and one. Yes. Yeah, we oh. um like you said, we just we just gotta we control our own destiny and we just gotta win out. Uh it's just one game at a time with us. Coach Ruffin, he's been been barking at ever since the beginning of the season. So we just trying to keep everything together intact and just make sure these guys ready to roll Saturday. Okay. Well, I'm going to flip a little bit. We're going to get back to that, you know, because my it's my job to let everybody know who you are. You know, as a handsome guy as you are, I see all your pictures, you know, uh, you from Pritchard, Alabama. How did you get to Tuskegee yes. University? Hey, hey. Um, just, you know, that's like you said, I'm from Pritchard, Alabama. Uh, played for the for the one of the greatest high school coaches in America, uh, Coach Ben Harris. You know he's a legend down there um, in Pritchard, and uh, had the opportunity to come out get a scholarship to Tuskegee. But my first my first official visit was at your alma mater, Texas Southern. I committed with them first coming out of high school, and um, took a flight out there on my first. Well, hold on, hold, hold yeah. up. <laughs> Yes. Ruining great. Oh yes. God. yes, yes. Bill Thomas was the coach. Yes, he was. He was. So uh I committed with them first because I was a two-sport guy and he was uh allowing me to play basketball as well. So I committed with them, came back home. My mom was like, uh, so how do you make your decision without you know saying discussing it with the family? <laughs> so I was like, man, okay. She was like, just go ahead and go on your other visits. And you know, I had the opportunity to go. You know, to my other business and everything, and I just fell in love with Tuskegee. Mm -hmm. You know, it was mm -hmm. it was it was love at first sight. So, ended up coming here and uh, started off four years, and you know, ended up winning forty two games and only losing five. So, yeah, yeah four yeah. years. Yeah, you you one of the best athletes I think have came through Tuskegee uh, with all the stats and stuff. You also took them uh, to a twelve and zero start. Uh, yes. You know. I know your wife is watching this. You got to mention them and the kids because I don't want to get yes. you in trouble. Yes, yes, mention that. My wife, I me, mean, my wife met here at Tuskegee University. Uh, Rosie Black James. Uh, we have a daughter, Layla James, and my oldest daughter is Erin Marzette. She's back in Mobile uh, in nursing school. So, uh, you know, uh, like I said, we we met here and and we've been together ever since. Now, now, playing there, you played up under Comanches and Coach Woody. How, how did yes. you like? Playing up under those guys. Oh, Coach Kamaji, he was a he was. I mean, his pregame speeches would make you run through a brick wall. I mean, he was just that persist in in everything. Um, and Coach Kam, I mean, Coach Woody, being a um, being my offensive coordinator, he was he was good. He gave me the green light to to be the the uh, offensive coordinator on the field. So whatever mm -hmm. I saw on the field, you know, I had to green light to check it and you know make things better. You know, except from what he's called in. So, uh, you know, I had, mm -hmm. had fun with that. 
all four years. So it was good. You, 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 you know, me and Coach Woody almost ended up at the same college. He went to Central State of Ohio, where I lived from, and I ended up going mm-hmm. to Texas Southern University. I always played with him. I said, man, that's oh, wow. the only way I played. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, Coach, you, uh, you know, was that 42 wins and five losses? Like I said earlier, introducing you, uh, man, I'll explain what the Turkey Day Classic means. I mean, you played in it, but you won it. Coach, it, it <laughs> exactly. Um, my record in, in the Turkey Day Classic, I only lost one time in four years. So, um, I mean, it's just a, it's a different atmosphere. You know, to come in, come out pregame, and the, the, the stands are all, like halfway full, and then you come back out, corn toss, and it's, I mean, it, it is full. So, uh, it's the it's a big rivalry. You know, the school's only like 20, 20 miles apart, 25 miles apart. And, you know, it's just, it's good. And knowing that, you know, um, Alabama State is Division One, Tuskegee is Division Two. all the records and everything goes out the window. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's mm-hmm. just, it's just guys lacing their chin straps up and, and getting ready to roll. Well, you know, about that Division One and Division Two, I guess that's scholarships. But you know, I know up at Tuskegee, y'all y'all got the tennis player out at wide out. Y'all got the, uh, the uh, track uh, tailback. Y'all, uh, y'all got the uh, the baseball player out at, at tight end. No, nah, so, I don't know what you're talking about. A bunch about. of multi sports guys out there. No, we get thirty six. Yeah, I think <laughs> that game. I mean, and me being the first time at Alabama State and playing in that game. Mm-hmm. I mean, you could. Feel the tension. You could. It, it was almost like you you were sitting in the oven, you know. And every play you called, every, you know, every you know motion or everything that you done, you felt like like man, this is going to either it's, be the game winner or it's going to be the game loser. It, exactly, exactly. And I I just go back at times to just to go back and look at you know the old film and just I, I get goosebumps just looking at it just. You know, seeing seeing everything. So I mean, it's it's exciting. It's an exciting feeling. So okay, you graduated from then. What you do from there? You say what? You was breaking up. You said what now? I said, oh, I'm sorry. I said you graduated yeah. from Tuskegee, and then you went to Bullock to start coaching, or? Yes, I went to Bullock County. Went to Bullock County. Um, start coaching. I was a assistant head coach, offensive coordinator, and then um, my head well. The head coach that was at Clark Atlanta, Coach Barher, Ted Barher, he called me and gave me an opportunity to come to Clark Atlanta and be the uh, Q, the QB coach. So I took the opportunity, went over there to Clark Atlanta. I was over there for six years, left Clark Atlanta, went to Lane College for one year, then ended up going to Miles College for nine years. Okay. Left Miles College, and then last season I was at Bethune-Cookman for one season and then got the opportunity to come back to my alma mater, uh, Tuskegee yeah. University. Yeah. Coach Ruffin, you know, just right now is uh, they missing you. They 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 struggling. They can't they can't put three touchdowns together. But uh, you know, I, I'm pretty sure Coach Sims uh, will yeah. do something about that. Uh, uh, you know, you you're a quarterback coach, and as you know, in our in in, in college football, there's not a lot of African American quarterback coaches. You know, so so you 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 wanted a few, uh, you know. How you feel being that that last or or do you one day aspire to go coach at the PWI schools? Uh, it really, I mean, if if the opportunity come, I'm a I'm a you know int- just um, see about it, um, entertain it, and just see you know the ins and outs of it. But I'm re- that's really not you know not my biggest goal. I mean, I'm I'm born and bred. HBCU, so I'm like I like to give back to the young men that you know that is trying to follow in my footsteps. So, I mean, it's really not like I say top of my list, but if the opportunity you know permits, I'll entertain it and see you know the ins and outs of it. Yeah, well, you know, we have uh, you know Deion Sanders in, in in black college football right now, and, and every social media outlet uh, uh, said that last night he was on 60 Minutes and. Yes. One of the comments he made was black colleges are just now a few years ago started recruiting four and five athletes, four and five star athletes. Yes. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm a black college guy. You know, I'm a graduate <laughs> from black college. I've coached black. Mm-hmm. I've coached uh, University of Cincinnati. I've done 
four stints in the NFL, and that's just not a true statement. No, it's not. It's not. A, that's not a true statement at all. How do you feel about that? No, like you said, uh, it's not a true statement. Uh, we've been recruiting four and five stars, you know, from um, from the beginning. And, you know, it's just uh, on those different levels that D1, you know, they have different resources than Division II or FCS. So um, it's not it's not just started. They haven't just started recruiting four and five stars. So that, that's that been happening. So. Yeah, yeah. We know because one of the things about it, I, and I know they just, well, probably about 20 years ago, they started putting stars by players. And yes. a lot of people that's doing that ain't even ever put a helmet on or a shoulder pads. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, um, but the swag, just alone, just the swag, and I'm pretty sure the SIAC has a lot. We have more uh, Hall of Famers. Mm -hmm. uh, we would be, if you put all the colleges together, uh, yes. we would be in the top five uh, as far as putting Hall of Famers in there. Now, I don't know if those guys were four or five stars, but, I, <laughs> but for sure, yes, it was some black coaches coaching. Yeah, it was. And, and you know, a lot of people don't know, don't realize that a lot of the HBCU program that's in the SWAC started out in the SIC. You know, so, uh, but like you say, a lot of those guys, if they had stars back then, a lot yeah. of them would be four or five stars. <laughs> Well, coach, you, you're a coach. Rank yourself. What would you be coming out? Two sport man. <laughs> Two sport. Um, I would say a, a, a four star, three and a half, four star. I mean, you know, uh, just looking back at my accolades in high school, and you know, just coming out, and and it's crazy because I came into high school playing de defensive back. Wow. wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. Came well, in. I, would, I wish when y'all played us, they would have kept your defensive back. <laughs> Who was the wide receiver yes. then? Who was the wide receiver that you boy y'all boy y'all connect like he could run like the wind he was a little thin guy mm -hmm. he could run like the wind. Colin Kimball. Colin, Colin Kimball. Colin yes. Kimball. I'm talking about stretch the field can go get it. I'm talking about it was it was a couple of times I thought I overthrew him and he just he ran under it and I mean, he, I, just, he was just fast. I tell you who else stood out was that middle linebacker number fifty pal. 51. 51. I was 51. Say, yes. I was yes. Yes. Kevin Powell was the defense. He was a, um, the captain on the defense. And he was, like I say, he was he was a man child. He he was, they called him Doc, Doc Vader, you know. So he was over there. He was he was a headhunter on that defense side of the ball. So uh, you know, I think he was like a three three year um, all American, three yeah. or four year all American. So I mean he he was the controller of that defense. Wow, and, and and now he coaches with you as well. Yes, he yeah. does. He's the he's the recruiting coordinator, linebacker coach here. And now we're talking about coaching. Uh, I, I never really heard of it a lot. You are the coaching way at Tuskegee, yes. um, uh, up underneath uh, Coach uh, uh, Ruffin. Yes, uh, who's been with you? You've been. He's been kind of like a mentor to you. Yes, and, he has. And he had just got announced as the the athletic director, head coach, mm -hmm. and I think he's saying that he's stepping down and now he's going to release the reins to you as well. How do you, do you feel pretty good about that? Yes, I do. Um, just going going into the season, you know, just trying to trying to make sure the offense is still intact, flowing. That really hasn't resonated with me yet. You know, uh, I'm just trying to make sure that this season goes well and just make sure that everything is, is lining up because, like I say, we said at the beginning, uh, we control our own destiny, and we got to score points. We got to finish the game with more points than the, you know, the op opposing team. So, uh, just you know, it's it's it started out like I said with a phone call. Coach Ruffin reached out to me, and then um, you know I spoke and talked with my wife, and we ended up sitting down talking together and just making sure all everything lined up and. Uh, I respect out to Coach Ruffin and told him, you know, I, I'd love to take the opportunity to come back to my alma mater and, you know, become the office coordinator and head coach of weight. And then just to, to pick it back off of that, when I got here in March and my mom was, she was a, my biggest supporter, even from park ball and everything. And uh, I came here, came here in March and my mom was in the hospital when I got here and um, ended up telling her before I got, you know, before I got here and she was excited. 
because she never missed a game. She never missed a college game. And um, to go on from that, she ended up passing in, in April. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, and like I say, she was she was my biggest supporter. And um, you know, my my this season here is dedicated to her. And then to go on top of that, we ended up losing a receiver. He received a Reg, Reginald Summage in March when I got here. So uh, you know, this season has been it has highs and lows, but uh, yeah. Yeah. you know that the team is is still together. And you know, like I said, uh, this season is is for Reggie. Reginald Summit and you know his family, and uh, you know we just gotta win out and just make sure that we keep everything in line. So yeah, because you because you guys started out zero and two. Yes, and I, and I was uh, man, you know I can't keep up with the HBCU schools, and man, I was I was surprised because you know I know uh, Coach Ruffin and you and Coach Powell, and I, I know you guys are all winners. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, how many championships you guys won, won at Miles College together? We won four. Four. Four miles, and we ended up going six. We, we won four out of six. Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. Four out of mm -hmm. six, yeah, when I was there. So when when will you when will you take over the, the job? December. December okay. 1. Yes, I will be taking over in December. Now, will you call your own plays, or will will they replace uh, you look for another coordinator, or how does that look? Oh, uh, right now I'm a, I'm gonna be calling the, the plays and uh, just to see how how everything rolled and I know it's gonna be a lot, you know, mm -hmm. trying to trying to be the, the coordinator and trying to manage the team, but uh, we'll see how everything roll and um, just go from there. Yeah, because I'm not I'm not I'm not the type of guy to just try to you know try to do both if I can have somebody else to do you know saying another thing. So I'm not that type of guy. Well, you know, let this old coach tell you, you know, don't don't <laughs> don't get those rings up. Get you get you somebody that don't play exactly. for you. And mm -hmm. uh, let them put the offense in and, yes. and you know, and then kinda kinda get kinda give him a little peace and now yeah. and then until you feel yeah. comfortable. Exactly. You gotta have somebody that you know you feel comfortable with that knows the system and you know don't have to switch nothing up for the kids and you know, that's the biggest thing. Just trying to trying to make sure that if that happens, to make sure that, that the person comes in, knows, knows the system, and, and that, that for so. Well, you got Lane College. Are, are y'all going to them, or yet they come to you guys? We're playing in a classic in Memphis. we in oh, Memphis. Wow. Yes. Boy, that's, mm -hmm. that, that's right on time. Yes. So so what, what concerns you, you about Lane College? I know they're going to come come playing playing hard hard ball and uh like i said they 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 have something to, to prove as well and they they want to get to the end of the road as well you know yeah. and host that trophy up so uh both of us competing for something and it's going to be a dog fight and i'm gonna yeah. tell you that lane they got a they got a good team over there and we just got to make sure that we're doing everything we can to finish the game with more points than them so yeah. that's the goal yeah we're we gonna go down memory lane for about two minutes Okay. Lane College. We seem to talk about Lane College. <laughs> Lane College used to be the armpit of yes. black college football. Yes. Uh, they used to ride in town the day of the game and mm -hmm. be trading helmets. Yes. But they went and hired a good guy named Vernon Brown who have turned that program around. He did and, that. Uh, uh, and uh, I, I could I could remember Lane was an automatic win. It was just getting them on your schedule you ain't even you ain't even recouped in but that just shows you how important it is to get a trigger man you know i'm talking with the, to these ad's and these presidents now uh that's hiring their friends and and hiring pro guys and people coming off because you got to go down there and do some work you know and i'm pretty sure at tuskegee you guys are are, are working hard as well Oh yes, yes. You putting the work in, and uh, you know, just making sure that we got to get this program back to the level it used to be. And you know, uh, and like you say, Lane, they went and hired Brian Brown, a good friend of mine, and and he got those guys rolling. And like you say, he come in and put in the work, and and that's the same thing when we first got the miles when Coach Ruffin got the miles. Miles used to be, you know, at the yeah, uh, area and everything like that. So we came in the first year. And turned the program around instantly, mm -hmm. and you know, ever since then, you know, they've been the powerhouse of the SIC. Yeah, yeah, with that, and uh, like Chinnis Berry over at Benedict College is 
Mm-hmm. Has gotten in there and now he's sitting at seven and oh. Uh, yes. uh he beat Albany this past past week. Albany usually Albany is always there. Albany has always been a step above, I would say everybody. They've yes. always had the scholarships, they had the stadium. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh uh I I I would say that. Uh Tuskegee, everybody always know you gotta play. Tuskegee, yes. when I coached at Texas Southern, beat me the year that I won the SWAG championship. And I knew then that I had lost the national championship uh, uh, trophy uh, with the BB, but it's some, it's, it's some in the water down there in Tuskegee. <laughs> what is it? Hey, we, we practice hard and we, we, we grind hard and we lay everything out on the field. I mean, it's just, it's just, I, I guess Booker T. Washington has his halo over us. You know, so uh, but but I'm, I'm, this this campus is this program, this school, everything it ends and out is just is is a one. I mean, we we get in the process now of getting the field turf, getting the field facilities and everything. That's you know, um, it should have been been done way ahead of time. But you know, I'm I'm very excited about it. It's it's going to be beautiful. Everything is beautiful down there. So. Uh, got something to show the, the recruits and the kids when they come in so you know we can we can go out and recruit with the uh fcs guys so yeah. we have some things to show them yeah well I, you know being from a black school and historic tuskegee can't say enough texas southern Baba jordan uh uh people don't understand that you know and, and i'm gonna say it Deion sanders is not swag you know, I'm not SIAC. I didn't walk them grounds in Tuskegee, but I walked them grounds in Texas Southern. Texas Southern. And I lined them fields, and I've done what I'm supposed to do. They don't ever disrespect that. Don't, 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 don't sell yourself for a dollar. You know what I'm saying? And one of the things, and you can comment on this, I've, I've read all the comments about the I'm swag, you ain't swag, don't disrespect me. But the one thing that I didn't, and they all, and most of them was on favoring Deion Sanders. With mm-hmm. his look. Uh, but people are forgetting, and I hadn't read one comment to say, Eddie Robinson had players too. He coaching young black men too. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and what he's coaching them and telling them, and I know just like me, is you don't let nobody come into your home. You know, yes. my daddy taught me that. When, when we was at home and, and we had brothers or friends over, when we heard my father pull up, we said, man, when he walked through that door, you make sure you speak to him. Mm-hmm. So, so I get Eddie Robinson. Hey, man, I'm at the 50-yard line. Coaching <laughs> etiquette. Head coaches meet at the 50-yard line. Mm-hmm. Shake hands, whatever, wave, but we're addressing each other. I'm at your home field. Mm-hmm. And you definitely don't walk through people's lines. Yeah, yeah. So Eddie teaching his kids some too. I can't sit there and let you do that to me, Dion, right. because you, you know, you one of the greatest athletes that ever played. You know, you brought a lot of vision to, uh, to our to the SWAT conference. I get all that, but man, respect the conference. Yeah. Respect, respect SWAT, SWAT Southwest Southwest. We didn't play in the ACC. You played in the ACC. Mm-hmm. I get that. You wrong. You're not SWAT. You coaching the swag. Your kids are swag. Mm-hmm. You know, we got a whole. That's that's like a fraternity. You know yes. what I mean? It's just a, and it's about respect, man. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on that, coach? Um, I guess with him with him saying he's he's swag. I guess by him coaching in the swag, like you say, uh, I'm SIAC. I played in SIAC. Like you say, you you're swag. You played at Texas Southern. So uh, I guess he's he's going at it where. He's coaching, making him, you know, I'm swag. So uh, I really don't don't want to get all the way into it, you know. Um, but I just he he's he came in, he's doing a hell of a job over there at Jackson State. Uh, got those guys playing to another on another level, and um, and he 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 he's able to bring old bring in those guys, recruit you know D1 guys, which is 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 great. Uh, but like I say, I mean, he's he's doing a hell of a job. I, I'm just yeah. gonna leave it as that. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. He's, he's getting some good transfers. Yes, but he is. But y'all got good transfers as well, as, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it's 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 been like that. I mean, Coach Comagy, one of the best. 
Yes. You know, I can't say enough about Coach Cummings. And you was a recruiting coordinator. Are you the recruiting coordinator now? No, I'm not. Not now. Coach Coach Powell is the, the recruiting coordinator. He's the recruiting coordinator, assistant head, and uh, linebacker coach. So okay. So yeah. you was the recruiting the coordinator at Miles. I was the recruiting coordinator at Miles. Yes. So 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 did y'all did not if y'all seen a five A player or four A player y'all didn't go after? Oh yes, 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 we did. We did. Yeah, we went out, went out, and went out hard at him as well. So yeah. I was able to sneak some a couple of three A, you mm-hmm. know, three A, four A. Uh, from from the swack, you know. So, but uh, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Now I see you're a history history major. What, yes. ma- what what made you major in history? And I guess you go to Tuskegee. You major in history, man. Uh, I, I I love history. I I love the old, you know, everything back modern days, and um, I just love the past. I love history, and just you know, coming here to Tuskegee. And it's a lot of history around the university in the city as well. So, you know, I kind of bought into that, and, and you know, I just, just, just ran with. It. I love history. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there any anything different about the program now that you, I guess, would change or, 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 or and I shouldn't maybe say change would add on to what you guys doing that 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 you're seeing. No, everything is, is going to stay intact. Everything is good, and uh, we we we'll we'll tight knit family, and everybody has coached. You know, I played with Coach Powell, played with Coach Ellis, who's my old line coach. Um, I coached with the defensive coordinator, Coach Coach Watson. He we, he was a DC at at Miles when I was over there, um, and one of the defensive back coaches played for me at Miles College. So. Um, I know a lot of these guys, the tight end coach, he's from my hometown. He's from, he's, well, he's from Mobile, from Pritchard area. And um, my, who else is the, um, the D-line coach. We was at Miles College together. Okay. So, um, okay. you know, in the receiver coach, he was at Coach Smith. He, he the one that came in at Miles College when I left. But I've been knowing him from, from uh, high school coaching at high school. And then my running back coach, Coach Thompson, he was uh, actually at Bama State last year coaching, and uh, we we was close friends from when he was coaching in high school as well. So everybody's on the staff is gelling, and they know each other. So uh, everything's going to be intact. Now, where where where, where you guys get most of your players from? Uh, we try to stay in the south southeast, you know, region, south southern region, and um, you know, uh, high school guys if they. If they're the guys we, we go after and, you know, we try to bring in a lot of high school guys so they can develop. And then we, we go in and then we try to, you know, pencil in some 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 juco, some transfers if, you know, we can get those guys in as well. So. Oh, OK. OK. Mm-hmm. Now, do y'all get down to Florida much? Yes, we, we tap into Florida as well. Mm-hmm. OK. Yeah. Well, let, let me let me throw something at you, you know, um, okay. um, you know, uh, 90, 92, 93% of all athletic directors in, in college are Caucasian white, don't look like us. Mm-hmm. So that means they're not going to hire us, you know. Mm-hmm. And you said earlier, you know, uh, you know, I'm a black college guy, but I would love to try to get an opportunity, uh, you know, maybe an opportunity. When when you know that there, there, there's, it feels like there's a ceiling over our heads, does that make you feel uh, like you can't, like you just kind of give up on trying to get up there? No, it doesn't. It doesn't make me give up. I mean, I just, I'm gonna be me, and I'm just gonna work my my tail off. And I mean, if it comes, it comes. If not, I'm not gonna go in and just try to beat my head into the wall just trying to get there. If mm-hmm. that makes sense, so I'm just gonna be who I am, and that's 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 all I can be, and just put my work is gonna gonna speak it for itself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, without a doubt, uh, uh, and that's that's why I say things gotta gotta change, mm-hmm. and the way you know my fight is we we gotta get a stage, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and 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 us getting together is cool. You know, but we need to get in front of some committees that can really make changes, you know, like the mm-hmm. NCAA about all these hard practices. You just seen a month ago, Nebraska re- revealed that this is their first 
head black coach in all the sports. You know, I hear you, I, I see you and read about you. You don't coach over 24 guys that don't made all conference and you've been a quarterback coach. You've been successful everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. Here, here's the, the, the reality of it. Man. If you was white, you'll be somewhere else. We play football in black college. You know, our, our football fields is rectangle and 53 and a half yards wide and 100 yards long. Mm -hmm. You know, how does that make you feel? You know, you're a younger guy than I am. You know, I'm at, at the end, I, I, I would say, and not necessarily the end, but, but mm -hmm. you know, I got some, some scars. <laughs> and you come, how does that make you feel? Like I said in, in the beginning, it, it, when I first started out, yes, I had to, that was my my focus trying to get you know to the next level but just letting everything soak in and just getting experience in the game i really didn't it's, it's really not like i said it's not top on my list now i just love love coaching these young men and giving them giving them the experience that you know i've played i've done and uh just just knowing that you can coach and coach and teach these young men on and off the field, you know, the game of life. That's all it is. Cause when, when football is over with, you got, you got to live life and life is hard out here for some of us. And, right. and as being an African American, it's real hard. So, right. you know, just trying to make sure that these guys get a quality education and, and go on and, and now they're able to provide for their families. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things, uh, uh, and it ain't, it ain't just, them or, or white folks it's, it's really us yeah. you know because you know i started in the 80s and mm -hmm. they were putting together lists top 20 black coaches ready for a head job and not one of them you know or, or maybe a few was guys from a black college and in 40 plus years of me being around black college there's mm -hmm. been two coaches that left division 1a and took a head job at a i mean left the SWAC or the MEAC or the SIC or the CIAA and I took a head job at a PWI school, any PWI. It was a guy from Alcorn State and it was Willie Jeffries from South Carolina. South but the guy from Alcorn State was a white guy with the Southern Miss. That's, um, I forgot. I know what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. <sighs> and now they're saying Dion is going power five. I told him I don't think so. I don't think so. I I, I don't I, I don't just, really I think just so. don't think so. And see, here's the other thing. You know, I guess I'm on my Dion tip. <laughs> you know, I, I'll challenge anybody. Mm -hmm. But doing a great job, don't get me wrong. And I ain't trying to hate on it. But mm -hmm. anybody can talk about a, a man that's down. We don't have what they have. But what we have is good for us. Mm -hmm. we don't keep on moving. You know what I mean? We got tradition. There's a guy named Eddie Robinson, not the Eddie Robinson at Alabama State. Mm -hmm. Eddie Robinson sold out Yankee Stadium, sold out the Superdome, sold mm -hmm. out the Astrodome, everywhere he goes, sold out Chicago Bears Stadium, and mm -hmm. he took Gramlin. Hey, you know what I'm saying? There's a guy named L.C. Cole, you know, uh, Atlantic Classic. Uh, the Memphis Southern Heritage Classic. Mm -hmm. You know, we finished 11 and 0, number one black team in the country. Mm -hmm. W.C. Gordon in the 80s, he at Jackson State, he won eight SWAC championships. Ooh. He put a team number of people in the pro. Yes, we can, we can coach. So don't beat us up. Let's mm -hmm. beat these other people up. That we should be coaching at Texas. More should be at Alabama. More, more of us should be at. Old Miss. More of us should be any any other school besides that we got a coach in black college. Yes. Only because we're black. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 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 what they think. And I mean, it's it's sad. It's sad. It's sad all the way around. But um, that's 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 what that's what's going on now. I mean, we just like you say, we we only can coach HBCU ball. So. And some of us now can't get head coaches even in our own conference, because they're telling us that if you don't have no PWI experience, you can't come in and, 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 and be a head coach. 
and and my you know again i i i talk from experience mm -hmm. uh, i look at the coaches that have came in any the sic the ciaa the SWAC, that have played pro ball mm -hmm. right and have came in and have gotten their butts kicked oh yeah yeah most definitely most yeah. definitely i mean i mean I, you coach ruffin uh 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 uh, LC Cole, uh, uh, your coach at Tuskegee. Uh, I mean, man, kick butt every year. Don't matter who coming to come. No That's what I want. Comedy. Comedy. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chinnis Berry is, is doing a great job over there, Benedict. Mm -hmm. You know. So, so we we kind of erasing that a little bit. Yeah. And yeah. Really look at what's going on. Yeah, and then you know this season was historic. Uh, actually, when we we beat a PWI this 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 season, ended up beating um, West Alabama for the seven hundred win. You know, Coach Ruffin got the seven hundred win against oh, wow. a PWI, wow. so that was big. That was wow. real big. Wow, mm -hmm. wow. See, I man, Coach Ruffin, though he's supposed to call me. I suppose <laughs> now he got seven hundred wins. Seven hundred, seven hundred and four now, and count wins. Well, it's College 705. Football. No, it's, it's in the, the university, Tuskegee oh, oh, University. Oh, oh, Tuskegee University. Yes, Tuskegee University, yes. Okay. University. okay. Yes. okay. yes. Okay. yes. Okay. yes. Okay. So we got the 700 win against West Alabama. Uh, now, did did the school game. celebrate that? Did yes, they, they did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, we, 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 yeah. we need to know about all those records and stuff. And, I, and that's yes. why I said earlier uh, that it's, it, a lot of it is us. Mm -hmm. you know, we, are, we don't keep up with our history. A lot of it is, is jealousy and, and envy mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. of each other, and especially yeah. when it comes down to a popular football coach. Yes. You know, and, and I'm letting you know now, you're a handsome guy. Uh, all eyes going to be on you. Uh, you know, everybody ain't going to like you. And I, I, I'm pretty sure Ruffin wouldn't have said you the next head coach if you wasn't ready. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, I, I, I gave, I mean, I applaud him for giving me this opportunity. You know, for uh, being the next man up. So, um, and then, you know, a lot of people still don't know that Tuskegee is the winningest HBCU in the nation. Okay. okay. The winningest I just, HBCU. I know my school, we, we ain't even half y'all age. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, you know, that's 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 real big. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that Turkey Day Classic, I mean, we we, we, we just screwed that up. We, we screwed it up. You know yes, I, mean? I, I I don't need, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but um, yes, yes, I do. As somebody that, that got smarter and was talking about well, Tuskegee don't make as much as money as Alabama mm -hmm. State. You know, well, first y'all come and play in the Crampton Bowl. You are Division Two compared to Division One AA. Uh, if you didn't play Alabama State the Turkey Day Classic, name me another game that you will get a whatever payout, two hundred, a hundred thousand, mm -hmm. whatever. But I, I get, I get, do fair with us, do yes. fair with us. But mm -hmm. the, to, the game is bigger than money. Sometimes the games are bigger than money. And and do do who you guys play in the Turkey Day Classic? Or are y'all in the Turkey Day Classic? No, we don't. We Alabama State is on the schedule for twenty three. We don't we don't play them this year. I don't know who they who they got scheduled for uh, Turkey Day Classic this year. I think it might be Miles. I think they're bringing Miles down. No, something. Miles played them in the beginning of the season. They okay. played the first game okay. of the season. So, okay. okay, I don't know who it is. I had to. I'm. I'm. I'm a, I had to check my check my records, my fact check. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. But man, tell me, is it is it something that uh, uh, you know we need to know about you or or or, or where you are in your in your career? Uh, just, I mean, you know, I'm back up, back, back home at my alma mater, and you know, we just trying to, trying to finish this season on top, and you know, we got this game coming up Saturday against Lane College, a good Lane College, and we just got to make sure that that we just finish the course. That's it. We got to win one game at a time, and Lane College is up next. So, my my, my guy wanted to ask a question. My guy Lenny Moon, uh, uh, he's a writer and, and, and he's putting together some material. He says, "How how would a coach persuade a four or five star prospect to choose an HBCU over PWI?" Well, you know, it's, it always starts with relationship. You know, you just got to go in and and 
just be honest and just be honest and down to earth with the family. And I you know we don't have the you don't have the resources. You know, that's that's the only thing with the PWIs. They have a, they have the resource. They have all the bells and whistles, you know, to show the young men. And and like I say, we just we can show them what we have. And it's all about trying to, you know, say win over that relationship and just and just being honest with the kids and the family. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I used to go in there and say, uh, son, just close your eyes for a minute. You, mm-hmm. You're 17, 18 right now. When mm-hmm. you get in 10 years or 15 years now, you know, one thing when you in open your eyes, you're still African American. Mm-hmm. Uh, ask your mother, ask your father, who's your, do your preacher look like you? Do your mother go to work? All the people you are deal with in your life, it ain't that you, you don't deal with white folks, but, mm-hmm. but, at the end of the day, most of all your friends don't look like you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, so that's one thing. And then the other thing I used to tell my, tell them is when you come on our campus, everything on our campus is for you. We ain't got to have a black student union. We ain't got to have a, a, a black party. We ain't got to have a party to play our music. Everything is for you. You ain't got to worry about nobody clenching their purse or, and, you have professors that will, will spend time to make sure you achieve uh, what you came for, therefore, is your degree. Mm-hmm. And then, is this a place that you will, when you get older, I, I, I mess with my brother all the time, uh, 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 Aaron. He went to University of Nebraska. Mm-hmm. I, I said, man, well, how many times you been to, how many times you been back up there? I yeah. said, then when you go, do anybody know you? Probably don't <laughs> the football players know you are. But I go back yeah. to my alma mater 30 years later, Hey, yes, it's, it's a family. It's, it's a family. It's a family affair. That's all. That's what it is. That's what man, it is. I, man, I know you got to feel great going back to your alma mater. Oh man, it, it, if you only knew, if you only knew, and then like I say, just looking down that hill, just seeing everything that's coming into place yeah. with the new turf, the facilities, and everything. So it's man, I just mm-hmm. can't wait. You made that happen. Now I know. I know your wife got to be feeling great. She now she she call her girlfriend. Girl, we got front row tickets. <laughs> oh man, yeah, she excited. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. What does another question? What does the Booker T. Washington statue mean to Tuskegee's current student and alumni? Oh, you know, it's this is the lifting. He's lifting the veil of ignorance off of you know off the slave and just you know it's. And it's, it just stands for, you know, um, just it's all about education, getting your education, you know, education in Tuskegee being one of the top educational programs in the nation. And, uh, you know, that's all it that's all it comes down to. And, you know, education, you got to get your education, graduate. So our motto, you know, we educate, we dominate, we graduate. Wow. Now, now, when you were there as a student, uh, did they? emphasize Booker T. Washington a lot, or there's some other outstanding, uh, of, co- of course, the Tuskegee Airmen uh, was mm-hmm. part of that as well. Uh, I think yes. you got the Kellogg Center down there as well. Yeah, you got the Kellogg Center. Uh, yes, you know, you learn everything in orientation, you know, uh, with the Booker T., you know, George Washington Carver, you know, George Washington Carver Museum is on campus. So it's a lot, it's a lot of history, like I say, on this campus. and. And it is, it is, it's, it's a tourist. If you want to come in and tour, you know, like you said, you got the uh, the Oaks, which is Booker T. Washington House. Like I said, you got the George Washington Carver Museum and, you know, uh, Chappy James Arena, you know, General Chappy James. So it's it's a lot of things on the campus to learn about. Wow, so so when you guys bring recruits on, you guys can, can uh, take them. I, and I know probably with bringing you and Ruffin back and Powell back, you guys get a lot of the older players coming back as well. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly, exactly. So uh, you know, just it, like I say, it's a family, family environment, family affair, and just you know, like you say, all the old my old teammates and everything. They're excited about the season, and you know, and uh, just looking forward to homecoming. You know, homecoming is it's in, it's in a couple of weeks, so we'll be able to get on the field. Who you guys got for homecoming? We play, who do we play? Oh, we play Miles. Yeah, we play Miles. Yes. Wow. We wow. play Miles College for homecoming. You tell Coach Ruffin, he being naughty doing that. <laughs> yes. Man, man, 
coach. So, so at your quarterback spot, mm -hmm. what's his name now? Bryson Williams. Bryson Williams. How's he doing? He's doing well. Uh, you know, kind of was shaky at the beginning, but uh, he bought in. I'm just gonna put it like that. He bought in. He's he, he's taking coaching well and just trying to slow the game down for him. And he's seeing it. He's seeing it now. Everything is is on point and. He's understanding, you know, what to do and what not to do, you know, versus uh, different coverages and things of that nature. So uh, he's learning the offense and, you know, he's in a driver's seat. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Coach, you, 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 you didn't play in the spread. I know James Woody and y'all used to run that lead play and y'all had that fullback <laughs> who was about 40 years old. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Army military. Uh, so big Chad, Big Chad Will. Army SEAL or something. Mm -hmm. He was Big coming Chad down Williams. crushing linebackers. Yes. And y'all double that double that nose to the shade and, and you get up there and you audible and we trying to give you a shade and then we bounce down and then you audible mm -hmm. it back. So now yeah. you run you run what the spread now? It's a spread. It's it's similar. I mean, you know, just from not being under the center. Uh everything is just, you know, multiple sets, spread, multiple set, multiple multiple formations and you know, and everything is still the same, it's just different terminology. And like I said, from being under the center into the shotgun, hey, it's the same thing, but um, that's it. Oh, wow, wow. Let's go over this conference, man. I tell you, man, you, you guys are, are all close together in the uh, West. You got Tuskegee 4-0, and y'all 5-2. and two. Kentucky State mm -hmm. is 3-1. and one. Tough mm -hmm. stopping that option because nobody does it. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Lane at three and one, mm -hmm. and of course Miles and Sister State are one and three. Mm -hmm. uh, and like you said earlier, y'all control your own destiny. And you got Kentucky State this week. No, we have we got. I mean, uh, Lane this week. Yeah, yeah, we have Lane this week. So Lane this week. Like, like you said, they are they are what three and one in the conference, mm -hmm. and we are four and zero oh in the conference. So this game, it, it it really means something. And like I say, it's going to be tough and. They want it, and we want it. So, like I said, we just got to come out and just make sure that we clicking on all cylinders, special teams, defense, and offense. So, we just got to make sure that we all together, gel together as one to come out victorious. Wow. And this is a big one because Kentucky State already have beaten Lane. Yes. Yes. They, they, beat, Lane. they beat you guys. Wow. That's, yes. that's, that's hey, you're going to have to start packing up and start getting ready for next year. No, 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 no! It's not gonna happen. That's not gonna happen. It's 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 not gonna happen. I, 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 no. Mm -hmm. uh, right, right. But then you go on the other side, the east. You got Benedict running away with it. They I are. Mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, when when they hit that six mark, I knew, uh, and they probably got two more conference games, uh, yeah, which which big. which they don't beat most everybody. They beat Albany State. They don't beat Edward Waters. Uh, they don't play Allen yet, and oh, they got Allen and Morehouse next. Yes, that's what they have. Uh, wow, so. and both of those teams are together is 0 and 9. You know, I got, I guess I got to mm -hmm. teach my brother a little bit, but but oh, they yeah. get they they get better over there as well. Yeah, they are, they are. Yeah. yeah. So what happens? Do y'all guys still play the Pioneer Bowl, the SIC versus CIAA, or is just the CIAA championship, and that's the CIAA championship and then the, the SIC championship. That's it. And then you know the playoff. You you get picked for uh, playoff berth. But um, oh that's, oh, that's you, oh that's why because you guys don't play doing things no more. Yes yes. So we have the opportunity if we we went out. Um, we have the opportunity hopefully to get a playoff berth. You know so go in the first round. So okay okay mm -hmm. man we coming down to the end man i told you it wouldn't last long when you okay. chopping it up man look yes. i'm a secret of my yours man now you know it ain't a more secret man great player aaron james great player i followed your career you've always been a first class guy mm -hmm. uh, i want to appreciate you giving me this opportunity your time through the door because you got a big one this week you gotta get yes, you know, i know you gotta get in that room and in, any last mark remarks I just want to thank thank you for giving me the opportunity, to, you know, to um, to come be a part of your show and and just just keep the uh, success that you have going on with your with your um, HBCU scroll and hey, 
we we here to win this weekend, one game at a time. And again, we are the best college HBCU in the nation. We are the winningest HBCU in the nation. And, 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 and what school is that? The Tuskegee University. You know. <laughs> hey, thank you, Coach. Man, I'm gonna great close the show out, man. I appreciate. <laughs> Uh, you know, I appreciate you, man, and good luck this week. I'll be watching you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, guys, that's my show with, with Aaron James, uh, uh, a young guy coming up through the ranks, uh, got some years of under him, uh, does a super job uh, for Tuskegee now as, as well as he did for uh, 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 Miles College. You know, one of the things that I wanted to touch on, uh, and I've touched a little bit on it, um, uh, with 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 Aaron James, uh, you know the Deion Sanders uh, uh, deal. I, you know, I, like everybody says, you know, and and he is. He's doing a great, great, great job for us. You know, but uh, you know, sometimes uh, as they say, all money ain't good money. You know, and I don't want us ever to lose sight of what HBCU college is about. I don't want to ever uh, let us lose sight that yeah there's a brother uh that's, that's that's trying to do well but sometimes uh you know you gotta you gotta do your homework uh, you know because before you go before you can go somewhere you gotta understand wh wh whose shoulders are things that you have stood on I, I i i get that he's he has opened the door uh for some things in our conference uh which is good you know but I think it's a oxymoron, uh, you know, to feed somebody and then and then and, and and feed them to make sure they have what they would need, and then you beat them down, you know, with all kind of bad comments and everything else. Um, and there's been great coaches that have came through HBCUs. Uh, you know, Eddie Robson Jr. talked about a lot of them. It, it ain't necessary about jealousy because if you say something against somebody that's doing a great job, it, all, it always don't come down to that. Sometimes it's come down to, hey, man, I get, I got you. But, hey, there's a lot of other steps that have taken place in this in this uh, conference, uh, and I'm talking about the SWAT conference, that you just don't know about. You're not the first to ever sell out stadiums. Stadiums have always been sold out. Southern and Grambling have sold out st uh, stadiums. Texas Southern... Grambling used to be in a Space City Classic game and sold out stadiums. Um, like I said earlier, Eddie Robinson have sold out stadiums everywhere you go. In Memorial Stadium in 1984, Willie Todd and Jerry Rice played against Alcorn State Marino Castle, and they sold it out. It was over 65,000 people. People was all down in the stands. Yeah, if we want to talk about why HBCUs are in, in, in a situation where they are, then let's talk about that. Let's don't, let's don't just throw out stuff and, and, and say stuff that you don't know anything about. I mean, you just in the 70s, you you know, they just started putting stars on players. Oh, this is a five star, and this is a four star, and this is a three star. Well, statistics shows that most four and five stars don't really make it as much as the three and four stars uh, make it on to the next level. But at the end of the day, you know, playing pro ball is great. It gives you a jump and start on life. But the average player only plays for three years. When there's another million dollar job, I mean, a million jobs out there in all kind of other careers. That's what HBCU is about. When I came to Texas Southern, uh, as soon as you walk up to the school, it says excellence in achievement. That's excellence in achievement. And wherever I've tried to do, wherever I tried to go, it was about carrying the Texas Southern name about being excellent and then you achieve. You know, and it was a lot of people walked through Texas Southern uh, before me, before there was a Mike Strahan. There was a Michael Holmes. There was a Kenny Burroughs. There was a Rump Holmes. You know, there was... Uh, 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 Ernie Holmes. Uh, there was all kind of greats, greats that I've seen play in black college. Period. You know your Killer Brews, your Brian Ransoms, 
you're Ed Tutal Jones. So many players have came out and so many players have played uh, this game. And so, you know, for us to sit back and say, uh, well, you know, I'm the first without having knowledge of, of what you're talking about, you know, it's, 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 it's crazy. It's ludicrous. And, you know, like I said earlier, you know, I, I read all the comments about the class. I mean, classes between coaches have happened all over uh, a whole bunch, not just in the swag. It's happened all over. And when you disrespect another man, don't, don't be because, oh, I'm great. The other man's supposed to bow down, you know, and, and, and coach Robinson, uh, Eddie Robinson, he's, he's, he's got to coach his kids, you know, and, and, and my daddy always used to say, man, this is my house. You, you just, this is my house. You got to respect my house. Yeah, yeah, you was a great athlete, uh, Johnny Cole, L.C. Cole, Norris Cole, Daryl Cole, Lyle Cole, Willie Cole. Yeah, he had a lot of sons, but he made sure he we understood that you take care of your house, and 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 you protect what's in your house. So I, I commend Eddie Robinson Jr. Uh, I commend uh, uh, Deion Sanders. You know, but let's get one thing straight. If there's no Jackson State, if there's no black college to give him that platform, there's no coach prime. There's no coach Deion Sanders because nobody else gave him that. I don't buy the fact that we chase you down and pulled you down and said, please, please come, come coach at one of the best black colleges in the country best black football programs in the country. They gave him opportunity. Deion Sanders, they gave you opportunity. And you have done fabulous with it. And I thank you for exposing some of the things, man. But remember, somebody came before you. So I'm gonna end like this as I always end. If you feel yourself at the end of the road, you tie a knot and hold on tight because ain't nobody bad like you. See you next week. My name is Daniel Jr. and I want $500 for the lunch money for the keeping up with the Jones Bracket Challenge. It's Sybil Wilkes with What You Need to Know. Today, it's Monday, July 24th, 2023. Number one, Vice President Kamala Harris is on the road speaking before organizations that embrace people of color. The nation's first female, first black, first East Indian vice president appeared Thursday before the National Convention of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, meeting in Indianapolis to talk issues with the thousands of members gathered. Among the topics, Vice President Harris addressed the startling statistics of black maternal health and the teaching of black history in the state of Florida. Number two, heat alerts have been issued for 44 million people in 13 states across the West into the South and Southeast. For the 43rd consecutive day in a city like Miami, Florida, where heat is no stranger, residents experienced the heat index values of up to 100 degrees. The massive heat dome is expected to spread this week. Phoenix, Arizona reached its fourth record high day of 118 degrees. The city reported extended weeks of 100 degree or higher temperatures, not including the heat index. Number three, new research shows black and Hispanic people having a stroke are less likely than their white counterparts to get treatments proven to reduce death and improve quality of life. According to guidelines from the American Heart Association and American Stroke Association, for strokes caused by a clot, the gold standard treatment is a clot-busting drug called Altaplase. They found 16% of black or Hispanic patients received the clot-busting drug compared to 21% of white patients. Number four, Noni Batiste Kosoko, a 19-year-old black woman, was an inmate at Fulton County Jail in Atlanta. She was in jail since May 20th on a misdemeanor bench warrant without a bond due to pending charges in Miami. On July 11th, 
Noni was found dead in her cell after officials made dinner rounds shortly after 6.30 p.m. According to medical personnel, she did not show any signs of injury. The Fulton County Medical Examiner's Office is expected to perform an autopsy to confirm her cause of death. The U.S. Department of Justice is currently preparing a civil rights investigation into the conditions at jails across Georgia. Number five, let go and let God means surrendering to God, letting him have total control of a situation and getting out of his way. Now for some, that's easier said than done. <laughs> Raising hand here. One reason is due to the spirit of doubt. We may tend to doubt ourselves and God and his ability to get the job done. So what do you do when you have doubts? Pray and trust God. Amen. Read more about letting go and letting God in today's Ministry Monday column in the newsletter. Here's your daily inspiration from Yogi's Jewels. Suffering is sometimes a choice, especially when you can ask for help. Join me today live on YouTube and Facebook at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central with social justice contributor Coy Malone, comedians Huggy Lowdown, and Chris Paul as we discuss today's top headlines and more. Thank you to our What You Need to Know partners, the American Heart Association and Black Health Matters. To subscribe to my free daily newsletter, please visit SybilWilkes.com. Be informed, be empowered. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV.